in this series we are discussing about the 24 important incarnations of lord vishnu which is mentioned in bhagavata purana this is part 3 lord vishnu's sixth avatara is kapila deva incarnation as son of kardama prajapati and devahuti he gave an explanation of the creative elements and metaphysics through sankhya philosophy many puranas mentions kabila as an incarnation of lord vishnu the malsya purana mentions kabila as the son of kashyaba from his wife denu daughter of dacha prajapati kabila was one among dhanu's 100 sons however his teachings are good almost all buddhist jainists hindus follow the sankhya philosophy taught by him kabilopadesha occurs in the third skanda of bhagavata purana comprising nine of its concluding chapters in kabilopadesha which is in the form of the dialogue between kabila and his mother devahuti where he gives lessons on variety of subjects however he never deviates from the central theme of the bhagavata namely mukti or freedom from bindings the sankhya philosophy is essentially advocating the mother towards this liberation known as kaivalyam the seventh incarnation is as lord dattatreya this incarnation as son of sage atri and anasuya is considered as a union of the trinity gods brahma vishnu and maheshwara again in this case there are different narrative stories for the birth of lord dattatreya we will go through one such story once the goddesses lakshmi parvati and saraswati were egoistic about their fidelity so seeing this sage narada decided to end their ego he brought some white marble stones and asked the goddesses to cook it for him they found this amusing and asked how can stones be cooked to this sage narada replied that it will become soft only if it is cooked by a woman who is loyal to her husband initially they thought it is a joke later when they found that sage narada is serious they took it as a chance to prove that their faithfulness is greatest they tried cooking the stone but it had no effect then narada told that he will take it to devi anasuya who is the wife of sage atri on arriving the hermitage he made the same request to devi anasuya to cook the stones atri maharshi was not present there at that time anasuya immediately took the stones and prayed to her husband and cooked it to everyone's surprise the stone got cooked like a potato hearing this the goddesses were angry and when their husbands brahma vishnu and maheshwara came back they insisted them to teach a lesson to anasuya the three gods then went to the hermitage of atri 
dressed like three brahmins and asked for some food as brahmins should not be sent back without giving food anasuya went inside and brought some food once the food was brought they told anasuya that they are undergoing a special penance and can accept food only in a state without any clothing she immediately realized that this is trickery because according to her it is both sinful to look at a naked man or to send back brahmins without food anasuya meditated upon her husband for a moment the clever woman brought holy water from her husband's pot and sprinkled it on the brahmins immediately they were transformed to three infants and feeding an infant in any form is allowed for a motherly figure as she took them in her hand all the three gods joined together becoming a single child with three heads when atrimharshi came back anasuya told the incident and he realized that the trinity had blessed him by taking incarnation as his son and named the boy as dattatreya later upon request of the goddesses brahma vishnu and maheshwara blessed the child and took their original form this incarnation which remained as sage dattatreya later taught us to learn things from the nature around you his famous 24 gurus from the nature are as follows earth wind sky water fire moon sun pigeon python sea moth honey bee elephant bumblebee musk deer fish cortician lapwing child bangles artesian serpent spider and wasp from each he learned some important lessons of life the eighth incarnation of lord vishnu is yajna avadaram in bhagavata purana devi bhagavata purana and garuda purana yajna or swayambhuva is listed as an avatar of lord vishnu yajna is classified as one of the 14 main manvantara avatar called vaibhava avatars it is an avatar corresponding to a manvantara who supports the corresponding indra and other gods to maintain the principles of religion yajna is also categorized as a kalpa avatar of lord vishnu an avatar corresponding to an eon is called kalpa avatar yajna is the son of prajapati ruchi and akudi the daughter of swayambhuva manu who is considered the first ancestor of mankind during the period of swayambhuva manu that is swayambhuva manvantara there was no qualified indra for the post of the king of heaven and the king of gods so vishnu incarnated as yajna and held the post of indra 
Another story from the Vishnu Purana tells that the time of the destruction of Dacha sacrifice, Dacha Yaga, Yajna, the Lord of Sacrifice, was escaping as a deer. Yajna's head was served by Veerabhadra, a fierce incarnation of Lord Shiva. Harivamsha and Linka Purana relate this to the origin of the constellation Natchatra, Mrigashira, deer-headed, that is Magairam Natchatra. The creator god Brahma elevated the deer-headed Yajna to the planetary sphere Mrigashira. The ninth avatar is Rishabha avatar. This is an incarnation as son of King Nabhi and Meru Devi, daughter of Indra, mostly worshipped by Jains. Some of our texts state that this avatar is same as the first Tirdhankara of Jainism. Rishabha is also found in Vedic literature where it means the bull and is an epithet for Rudra, Lord Shiva. According to some scholars, there is a considerable overlap between Jain and Hindu Vaishnava traditions in western parts of India. Both religions adopt each other's sacred figures such as Jain texts adopting Vishnu avatar Krishna and Rama, while Hindu texts adopt Rishabha and his son Bharata. He instructed his sons to follow the path of perfection. This order of life is respected by all others. This incarnation was to teach the path of perfection by Tavasya, which sanctifies one's existence and enables us to attain the stage of spiritual happiness which is eternal. Thank you and we shall come with some more incarnations in the coming part.